This video is going to be called Water Pressure 101. It's a basic video explaining why you need water pressure in a jet boat and also um, uh, it's very important not to have too much water pressure. This is a 454 Chevy hydraulic roller motor. It's got the water log style exhaust system. Um, the jet pump is a Berkeley jet with a BC cut impeller. The first thing I did when I purchased the boat is I put a water pressure gauge on the intake manifold. This one's from 0 to 30 PSI. I took the boat out and I drove the boat. At idle, I floored it. I did not read any water pressure in this boat. Zero water pressure. That is bad news. <clears throat> now I have water volume. The boat did not overheat and it ran fine. So I had water volume but I did not have pressure. The reason for not having pressure was because the inlet hose, the water coming from the jet pump, is this line right here. Let's see if we can see in here. It's got a half inch um, barb fitting coming from the jet. That's a Berkeley pump. That's a half inch hose that comes in. That is stock. And generally it goes to a T, which uh, splits out to a three quarter or five eighths hose and that comes up to the exhaust water log here it goes through the exhaust heats up the water comes out the exhaust to here which goes into the water pump ports of my big block and then comes out the thermostat housing and to the back of the exhaust here and out the boat now the problem with this was I had no pressure the reason I had no pressure was because you need to have a restrictor plate inside your thermostat housing if you're not running a thermostat you need to have a thermostat uh, restrictor in there and the restrictor basically since you have half inch water uh, line coming in and then it goes to a th three quarter inch line it basically the volume the uh, the water opens up within the motor so you have all these big chambers that the water needs to fill when you have no pressure it doesn't have enough pressure to fill those empty gaps and you actually end up with hot spots within your motor you actually need pressure the pressure actually indicates that you've filled all the voids inside the motor so you don't have any hot spots in the motor if you're not reading pressure then basically you have water just running through the motor you have some you have some voids in the motor where you're gonna have hot spots and the motors not gonna run to its full potential so you want to see pressure so what you do is you put a restrictor plate inside the thermostat housing and that's what I did Moroso sells a restrictor plate that goes in the thermostat housing uh, the the kit comes with three different plates. I believe one of the whole sizes is half inch, another one's five eighths, and possibly the other one's three quarter. I don't recall. Um, I actually had an old Moroso kit laying around that I had two of the fittings. I did not have the third one, but uh, I ended up using a half inch um, restrictor there because I have basically a half inch coming in and I have a half inch going out. That allows it to fill the void in the block. Um, I ended up with about uh, uh, I think it was five pounds of pressure just at cruising at idle it still dropped down to about one pound which is okay because it's just idle um, but once I got on it and I floored it uh, I had about 10 pounds you never want to exceed 15 pounds of pressure um, in a boat so that's really important that you check your water pressure in an engine a lot of guys don't know about this and they just throw their engines together also by changing the impeller and the pump that can change the volume or the pressure um, in your motor so you always want to check the pressure water pressure in your motor especially when you change the jet pump now if you were to um, have too much water pressure in your engine and you needed a way to relieve the pressure you could add one of these jet boat water pressure regulator kits now I have one on this boat which I don't need because the water pressure never exceeds 10 pounds but this is a water pressure regulator kit what it is is it has a relief valve right here and if you take this cap off there's a screw inside here and you can adjust to raise or lower the pressure uh, relief to relieve at a, a particular pressure by watching your gauge you can make it maintain the pressures you want 
In this case, this one is just kind of here. It's not even being used. It never even opens because the pressure never exceeds 10 pounds. But it is plumbed in, and if I ever wanted to add headers to this boat, um, I already have the pressure valve. Um, with headers, you have to restrict the water going to the exhaust, so you tend to raise the pressure uh, of the water in the boat, and you need another way to relieve that pressure, and so you need a water pressure relief valve to do that. You also have a gate valve here. In this case, because I had the restrictor in the thermostat housing, this valve is completely open, all the way open. The water um, just flows freely, and then I have a restrictor plate um, in the thermostat housing, and my pressures are working out perfect. So that's basically used as an emergency valve. If you ended up with a hose broke in the middle of the lake, you could close that valve, and it would prevent water from coming in and sinking your boat. Um, the, having the relief valve on here is not hurting anything. It's just plumbed in, and it's there. Um, if I ever change the impeller or something and my pressures change, at least it's there and I can use it if I need it. At this point, it's just useless. In so any case, so uh, that's 101 of water pressure. Um, once you get this all done, you have the option. You can remove that gauge if you don't want it and plug the hole again. Um, you just need to get your basic settings. Once they're set, you can pull the gauge off. Um, so anyway, that's how it works. I um, hope that helps you guys out.